I'm Josh Ramsden. I'm the playwright, director, actor, producer of A Soldier's War, which is a World War II play inspired by the letters written by my grandpa while he fought with the Canadian Army in World War II. So he was on Juneau Beach on D-Day. So it's a story about five different soldiers who go, uh, what they experience and how they survive and cope with living through a wartime scenario. February 19th, 1944. Somewhere between Drummondville and Quebec City. To my dearest wife, Lily. Good morning, everyone. Dear Mom, Dad, Grace, and Bill. We left Camp Borden yesterday at about 4.30 p.m. It's 9 a.m. now, June, and of course, we're still on this goddamn train. We're not expected to arrive at our destination till tomorrow, Mother. We have no idea where we're going, Dad. Well, I mean, we haven't been told. Can you believe that, June? I mean, how am I supposed to tell you where you should write me if I don't even know where I'm gonna end up? The word like, I lived with my grandpa just before he passed away. And when he died, I got all his letters that he had wrote home to his family while he was in World War II. And the letters sort of spurred on this questioning because the first third of his letters had a voice of a person that I never met. And then the latter half of his letters were more familiar to me. So and it was a question of where the change happened. My dad was a very strict boy, yeah. Um, but without ever sort of telling you the rules, <laughs> you know, he just found out when you broke them that there was one. I mean, the one thing I remember my dad used to say all the time, you should have been in the army anytime we were out of line or weren't happy about something. Other than that, all he talked about, about the experience over there was mostly funny things. He wasn't too keen on talking about, you know, the more serious things, which I never found out about how, until these letters surfaced after my dad died. And, um, I mean, I didn't know that guy. Excuse the quality of my handwriting, Mother. The train has been bouncing all over hell, but it's stopped now, so you should see an improvement. Well, we seem to be in the middle of nowhere, June. There's not much to look at, everything's covered. There's so much snow. I never thought I'd say that, especially coming from Toronto. Well, some trips look to be about 10 feet high. I mean, all I can see I can see a church and a farmhouse and a little town, I think. You were right, Mom. Our country is quite beautiful. And to think, if I hadn't joined the army, I'd never have been able to see so much of it. He would have been 21. So even now, I think of I'm almost 31. I can't imagine 10 years ago having to go and fight and be away from family. And at that time, the type of communication they had was very limited. So you're totally on an island. You're really like just surrounded by the people who you're serving with. And then what must that be like for those people that you grow close with to die and not really have an opportunity to really say goodbye? I miss you more and more each day, Lily. Your loving husband, Frank. P.S. If we do end up in the Burt, I'll be sure to visit Arthur and Catherine in Halifax. The story is a lot about the variety of ways in which people cope and that everybody's journey is different. And you know, I talked to a veteran who said, you know, that it's more likely that people will be able to relate to this sort of art platform to have this discussion about PTSD or OSI through this story rather than the stories that some veterans say because for those who've never lived that life, how do you relate to that life? So I walk over to her and I'm wiping the mud off my face as I go and she says to me, she says, is this a seat taken? What? Is anyone sitting here? It's all yours. Jack, what? It's in the middle of my story. Well, you can sit and you can keep on talking. I don't even know this kid. Well, I'm Leslie. Leslie Matheson. Just sit down. See? So Leslie is a really young guy who, who's enlisted in the, in the draft. Um, he has a really strong family connection, a very faithful young man. Um, and then his journey throughout the show is a test of faith. And then when uh, we get to, to some of the wartime action, it's, it's just devastating. And by the end, he's, he's a shell of, of who he used to be. So, um, so the arc of that is, is quite remarkable. 
um, to see somebody going who believed in everything to believing in almost nothing. You just have to find what you're fighting for, Leslie. I, I can't. I'm too cold. I can barely feel my fingers. Well, stop rubbing your hands together. That ain't gonna help. Gotta wrap your arms around your body and rub your torso. That'll do more good than rubbing your hands together. Really? Yeah. And maybe once you're warm, you can be quiet. I ain't gonna get any sleep with all your complaining. Sergeant! Oh, Lieutenant Rookie! At ease! You men keeping warm? Uh-huh. Yes, sir. We're doing our best, sir. Good. How you doing, Private? Cold, sir. Yes, it is that. Walter is a lieutenant in the Canadian Army. He is a bit separate from the rest. Um, being an officer, uh, he, he feels quite reticent to get close to the other uh, soldiers because he has a duty to do. He has, he has a certain responsibility, right? He can't care too much. If he uh, gets too close to any of them, then he worries about what kind of effect that will have, right? There's a line in the play, I, I can't imagine what it's like to lose a man, but if that man or my friend. These men, these boys, surround me, yet I speak no words to them, nor them to me. To them, I am Lieutenant Rooking, the man telling them to advance, the man ordering them to fire. Well, to me, they are the men I will put in harm's way. I mean, a big part of it for me was I wanted to structure it in such a way when I wrote it, that what the men were feeling or going through is how the play was written. So a lot of hurry up and wait at the beginning, a lot of training, but not really doing anything. I mean, there was a lot of sense of boredom in a lot of my grandpa's earlier letters because it was just like, we're here, we're still doing the same thing. Like, So the first third of the play is this is really structured in a sense to kind of lull you into this feeling of not doing anything, nothing's happening, because that's the way it would have been for them. And then it takes a drastic turn because it's it becomes now, it's like, well, now you're in it. And now it's you move and people die and you don't get time. And so the play ramps up in sort of tempo and pace and sort of this unforgivingness um, so when you want to grieve, you don't get to grieve. When you want to laugh and you want to keep laughing, you don't get to. It's just, it's playing this psychological spectrum of what a soldier might have experienced so that when people walk out, they're like, okay, well, I, I have not experienced it, but I now can maybe understand. All of the actors are Saskatchewan-based artists. Same with our designers, Saskatchewan-based. Um, all of them have fine arts degrees from either the University of Saskatchewan or the University of Vagina. Unbelievable. What? Nothing. Well, did you want to see what I got? No, Jack, I didn't want to see what you did to your family said to this time. Calm down. I didn't don't mean tell to Tell me that, Jack. Don't tell me to calm down. You got a parcel in your hands. A parcel that's probably filled with cigarettes or pictures from socks from mommy. Do you want to know how many things I've got from home since we've been here? I don't know. Go on. Ask me, Jack. How many parcels have you? Zero! Zip! No letters, no parcels, no nothing. Harry, there has to be a reason. Bring this coming out of my Shut your mouth, mouth Bunsen. Shut your goddamn mouth! You're always making sound out of your mouth. I can't even hear myself think when you're around. God! Don't you realize that there's a war going on? The people are dying every day, and when we get over there, we're probably gonna die too! Both my parents were medics in the military. Uh, my parents actually met uh, in basic training at Camp Borden, in Ontario, which is actually the same camp that our story starts in. There's a lot of little attentions to detail that maybe the average person won't notice, but anyone who's been in the service will probably pick up on, even right down to the correct angle of their hand when they do salutes and the placement of their feet. We've actually got World War II training manuals that tell you how things needed to be done because we're trying to be as accurate in those as we can. And that accuracy also follows through to not only our costumes, but also all of our props. So any of the letters or parcels in the play that you see, all of them have period appropriate uh, postage stamps and postmarks, all the telegrams are period appropriate, all of that. June 5th, 1944. 
Men... Together with the rest of the Allied forces, we will mount an invasion on the beaches of Normandy. Depending on your rank, the weapons you will carry are rifle and bayonet, PX, two-inch mortar, Bren light machine gun, stens, and folding knives. Theater offers the opportunity to affect an audience differently than a film would because you're in the same room with these people. And I think what we're trying to do is sort of push the limits of what stereotypically we're conditioned to like be able to cope with from a television standpoint, film standpoint. So when moments become uncomfortable and in TV they cut away, our job has been to try and explore not cutting away and making you sort of sit in it with them because they didn't get to turn away. May God have mercy on our souls. pulling punches on some of the extreme violence and some of the atmospheric things that these soldiers would have been subject to. So there's some very loud, disturbing, jarring points in the play, and there's some very violently brutal points in the play that we chose to present in a natural, realistic manner. And I think if we do our job correctly, people are going to walk away from this feeling a little unsettled. What's your status? Two more dead. Jesus, we've lost a lot. Yeah. Uh, I have to get back. Got a lot of letters to write. Walter, you've done a lot. Take a break. Yeah. By seeing how five people responded to the experience they went through then from the point of view of what it's like just to be a soldier. You know, you're not a career soldier, you're just a guy that's decided this is something that you should be doing, you know, and then everybody reacts to it differently, which is really shown in this play. At 17 or 18, you, you really think you can take on the world because you, you feel sort of invincible. There's a sense of adventure, and because you're so naive at that age, like, you have no idea what you're going to what you're going to meet. I'm hopeful to drive and create a bit more awareness around operational stress injury and or PTSD, whichever people are more familiar with, and whether it's uh, military related or you know police officers or firefighters or EMTs or emergency room nurses or doctors. You know they deal with difficult situations on a daily basis, and so. I think it will be helpful if more people understand that this is uh, an ongoing concern and that there needs to be more awareness and support. And patience, I think, is a big one, is patience, yeah. I can't tell you how much I miss you. That is something I will never be able to put into words. I love you, Frank. If you have program ideas that you'd like to see on Max TV Local On Demand, write us at max.local at sastel.com.